Welcome to this installment of the Consultants Training Institute's Emerging Leaders Series. I'm Brian Jones. I have the honor of being joined by representatives from the European Association of Certified Valuators and Analysts, EACVA, Andreas Kritzmann, Wolfgang Nist, and Wolfgang Essler. Um, thank you, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. You have been partnering with the NACVA for many, many years. Um, offering the Certified Valuation Analyst credential in the European Union. Um, so tell us a bit about your organization and some of the goals and objectives that you've been accomplishing over these past few years. Yeah, uh, Brian, we, we started uh, in uh, 2005. Uh, now we are almost 10 years uh, in the German-Austria market. Uh, and uh, the CVA, I think, is well uh, established. Uh, we have a lot of uh, attendees uh, who uh, visit uh, our trainings all over the year. Now we have around about six uh, trainings uh, uh, in the year, and uh, we try to expand. Growth uh, isn't at the end. Very good. How many members do you all have? Um, these days we have more than 300 members. Um, I expect to, to break the 500 members within the next two years. That's a big goal. Yeah. Yeah, what are some of the activities? I know you are hosting a very large conference. Um, your conference has become quite a significant uh, draw internationally and the, the practitioners that you have presenting. Um, tell us about some of your chapter activities and things you're doing to keep your members engaged and, and up to date on all the concepts and valuation. Yeah, uh, for uh, the eighth uh, time, we are presenting a conference uh, this year in Berlin. Uh, Roger Gorowski and uh, Demodoran uh, will join uh, the conference. Uh, Demodoran for the third time, uh, Roger for the fourth time. And uh, it's on two days. Uh, we expect around about uh, 300 uh, participants. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it's, it's really... Um, well known uh, in Austria and Germany, and uh, we are, I think, the leader, uh, leader of the conferences uh, in business valuation mm -hmm. in Germany. So for practitioners who um, are evaluators in the United States, um, how would you describe some of the issues in the European Union that are similar to U.S. valuation, or what are some of the um, synergies and overlaps of, of areas of specialty, perhaps, or industries? Um, that would be relevant to share with the, the folks? I think um, what's very similar, uh, I think worldwide, is all the valuation issue, issues about uh, mergers and acquisition, transaction, exit planning. This is, this is quite similar. Mm -hmm. um, which is a little bit more country specific is all what happened about the legal valuation issues. So uh, tax valuation, uh, squeeze out or freeze out valuation, shareholder disputes. Um, this depends very much on the uh, court decisions in each country. And there are a little bit differences between the countries. Uh, but at the end, um, the, the, the basic concepts and the basic methods are the same all over the world. Mm -hmm. You know, what, what is interesting, I think, with, with our chapter is that we manage to, you know, integrate very diverse members. You know, we have many members from the large consultancy firms, as, as you knew them here, sure. you know, the Magic Four or, or, or big, 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 big Five. Mm -hmm. But then also, you know, smaller auditors, smaller tax consultants, uh, many attendees in the training weeks from uh, controlling departments or M&A departments at the large corporate firms. So it's very diverse, and that's that's why I think also the conference is so well accepted and, and attended because they really can you know discuss all the various issues from different point of views, mm -hmm. also on the valuation. Mm -hmm. And this is very very good to see in, in Germany that it's so diverse. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think we are market leader because we just you know have all the various sources of, of attendees. Where do they they represent um, primarily? What, what, is, what is a good representation of your membership? What types of uh, firms are they coming from? Um, large accounting firms, smaller accounting firms, regulatory agencies? Talk a bit about the, the profile of your members. 
Yeah, that's the difference, uh, I think, to the, to the NACVA here. We, we are all across all uh, uh, firms, small firms, big f uh, four, big five uh, or big four firms, mm -hmm. and, uh, and the corporates, and especially the corporates members uh, are really high reputed uh, companies, uh, well known uh, all over the world. It's Daimler, uh, for instance, Telecom, uh, and uh, that's uh, an approach. Uh, which sometimes um, makes it difficult in the trainings because mm -hmm. there are so many different uh, approaches to, to valuation. The corporates are uh, just uh, preparing investment decisions and, and the consultants and uh, all the others are uh, uh, writing reports. Uh, mm -hmm. That's quite unusual for uh, corporates to write reports, mm -hmm. uh, just one or two pages to summarize uh, investment uh, decision. But that's also interesting for all uh, people who are joining the trainings because they can learn from each other. Mm -hmm. The, um, at least here in the U.S., I know there are the state courts, the federal courts that drive the legal precedent as to what um, the framework of valuations. Are those issues similar in the European Union, especially with um, two countries specifically that you're referencing, Germany and Austria, mm -hmm. you know, what are the issues that you all deal with related to legislation um, and, and how do you factor that into your training? I think we have to, to, to split uh, two different uh, kinds of, of legal valuation. Uh, the, the tax valuation issue, um, there are only very, very few um, court decisions around the tax valuation. Okay. On the other hand, uh, all what happened about shareholder disputes, there is a lot, a huge amount, a lot of a large number of, of uh, court decisions every year, um, and this influences also the um, the practitioners how to how to evaluate in in these uh, in these uh, um, purposes of, of, of valuation. And also this, you know, it's interesting because, you know, starting with this squeeze out some some 15 years ago in Germany because beforehand it was not possible to squeeze out shareholders out mm -hmm. of a company mm -hmm. like we have it today. Uh, and this led to a very, very high uh, transparency of valuation reports, valuation, you know, details, how to derive the beta factor and all that stuff. And this was not known before, mm -hmm. so it's it's very transparent and very driven also, of course, from the you know larger accounting firms, which kind of did set more or less new standards together with the judges. And there are many judges in, in Germany who are really deep into the valuation issue mm -hmm. in these days. So it's not only you know that they are judging about the law, but also you can discuss with them uh, valuation issues very very thoroughly. Mm -hmm. And you should know all the valuation reports. Um, um, in the squeeze out um, market are public, so they are public right. for all people to look in. Okay. And yeah, this this is good for a, a discussion about. Mm -hmm. yeah. what's so what are some? Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's one point I I want to add. Look, we are the only uh, valuation association in Germany and in Austria, and uh, there is. Traditionally, uh, many years ago, just one valuation standard, uh, which is recognized uh, in Germany, that's from the CPAs, the mm -hmm. valuation standard. And uh, this standard uh, uh, is always uh, uh, here in the, in the courts. Um, and uh, so German CPAs have influenced business valuation a lot more than other professions uh, around the valuation area. Uh, and uh, there are special things like valuation with, with, with income tax uh, uh, for the squeeze out uh, mm -hmm. cases. And um, so our approach, as well as the trainings, is to give uh, a, a great uh, a look of all the different areas. We are looking as well as the special squeeze out valuations, as well as the small medium companies, um, and uh, as well as uh, the valuation of intangible assets, um, more or less. So uh, that uh, makes us interesting for all the members who join us from 
large companies as mm -hmm. well as from smaller companies, from large consulting firms as well as from uh, smaller consulting firms. What would be some of the opportunities for U.S. valuators to consider, or what would you advise them if they were considering to get into um, international valuation or practicing um, collaboratively with, with some of your members? What advice would you give to them, and, and what areas of opportunity would there be? Well, you know, first of all, I, they, they would have to find, you know, clients who are operating internationally. You know, the, the only purpose is when you have operations, you know, overseas or, or in Europe, in Asia, in Africa, or whatsoever. Uh, and if then the U.S.-based clients ask them to, to help them in overseas business, then I think there are so many opportunities. And also, you know, like organizations like the European Association together with, with the NACFA in, in, in the U.S., then we could, you know, join, join uh, powers and, and then also give them advice how to you know do the valuation work in, in, in Germany or in Europe mm -hmm. so simply that they do uh, nothing wrong which then you know c cannot be um, argued at, at, at the German courts for example mm -hmm. so I would not advise a US valuator to do a valuation you know on a, on a very specific German issue right. without asking someone over over in Germany or in the German-speaking countries in, in, in Europe. Uh, the same with us, you know, I, right. I would say we are not good advised doing a valuation for tax purposes That's in true. the U.S. without asking someone who is, mm. who is capable of it, mm -hmm. and then, yeah, collaborating with a U.S. colleague. Mm -hmm. um, so are all of you valuators in the firm together, separately? Um, talk a little bit about sp what kinds of engagements you're individually involved in in your areas of, of, of specialty. Yeah, I think Wolfgang and me, we worked uh, together for, uh, since 2003 and our valuation firm is really specialized in a, in a special valuation area and the squeeze out valuation okay. and valuation for business combination agreements. Uh, and as well, uh, we uh, are um, uh, witness at, at court and uh, do valuation. So it's really a, a special issue, we can mm -hmm. say so. Because normally our um, valuation uh, targets are, are stock-listed companies. Uh, that's quite quite normal. Uh, and uh, we are performing now uh, since uh, 1999. And on uh, Santa Claus Day, we uh, founded our, our company. Uh, and so yeah, we have a long tradition. Germany. Santa Claus. And, it's, and we, we, yeah. Santa Claus Day, is that Christmas Santa Day Claus. in the U.S.? No, or is it a different no, holiday? No, it's the 6th no, uh, December. Okay. Yeah, it's the same day. Hmm. You have a designated <laughs> day for Santa Claus. That's pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah. So, since 1999, you've been partnering together? 2003. 2003. 2003. Yeah. So, yeah. what? Oh, go ahead. Um, since 2005, I'm the managing director of, of uh, EACVA in, in Europe, and uh, so it's it's a growing uh, it's a growing uh, work to do uh, for me. For I think now these days, 80 percent of my daily work is um, for the association, oh, and 20 percent is yeah cooperating with, with Andreas and, and business valuation uh, That's projects. a lot of time spending yeah. toward the association. Um, what is it member contact? Um, what, what type of activities are you doing? Uh, I'm, I'm the guy. Growing, growing, growing the association uh, in, in, in Germany. So I, one, of, one of my major uh, issues is the, the CBA training. Uh, um, Getting good, uh, looking for, for good uh, teachers, uh, getting them involved. Um, uh, our conference is a, is a huge is issue for us, <laughs> yes. as, as you know. Yes, <laughs> it's a big. Uh, two days conference, uh, more than 30 uh, presenters all over, from, from all over the world. Mm -hmm. And now we, we try this year, uh, you know, one, one, one thing in Europe is, is the language thing, yeah? To, if, if we like to, to attract French, uh, Netherlands, um, Spain, Italy, 
uh, people we need to be in English in our conference. And that's what we, we try. We, we have 24 sessions uh, in English and 24 sessions in, in German language, so to, to catch all, all people from, from Euro Europe. And this takes a lot of time sure. um, to find the right speakers. And yeah, it's good, a good big topics. Job. It's right. a big job. Right. He's too shy. He's, <laughs> doing, he's doing almost <laughs> all, everything. All, almost exactly. everything. Look, look, he's developing the trainings. He's looking, reviewing all the other trainers okay. uh, around the week. And you have to know in our trainings, normally we have at a minimum five uh, instructors. Yeah, five instructors. Okay. Sometimes six or seven. Wolfgang is as well an uh, instructor, and uh, Wolfgang is uh, is on. He arrives uh, always on Sunday evening, uh, and he will leave on Saturday after the uh, multiple choice test. Mm. And he is uh, the person uh, who answers all the questions. Uh, our participants have and he is developing seminars and he is as well uh, in administration look we have okay. more than 300 uh, members. members and uh, normally say no Wolfgang from the trainings and they go to Wolfgang and, mm -hmm. and telephone him and call him uh, and ask him the question so he's doing a lot of things and the ne negotiations with the hotels you know it's a, it's an important issue uh, there's a lot. It's, it's a lot it's a lot it's, a, it's an organizing job as well as an developing uh, sure. the seminars, the products, uh, our trainings, uh, the CBA. Sure, we definitely understand what it, what it takes to run a member-driven association. Well, and being responsive to your members' needs, too. Um, they need, you know, resources, feedback, um, you know, that, that confidence building, going through a, a, a training program that's so rigorous technically in a short time frame, mm -hmm. Um, and then all that's required to get them up to speed and confident um, and to build that relationship to that member um, is an important thing. And it sounds like you guys are doing a great job and have goals to grow. Um, so on the personal side, I mean, you guys have been so involved with us and we definitely have appreciated the collaboration that we've shared with you all over all of these years when you're not working hard you know, building the association and building your practice, what kinds of things do you enjoy in your own free time? Or do you work all the time? No, no, no. no. <laughs> what can start? I start? <laughs> well, in the free time, you know, I, I enjoy, of course, the, the time with the family, which uh, we don't uh, see each other t too often because, you know, traveling, traveling a lot for business. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we, we often go to the mountains, you know, hiking and, and, and skiing in the winter time, of course, mm -hmm. uh, and a little bit of golfing. Do you have kids, young kids? Any of you? Yeah. Yeah. All of you? Two daughters, Two nine daughters. and 11. Wow. Close in age. A son and a daughter, also nine and 11. Yeah. So you're the busy guy, sounds like. Yeah. Do you exactly. have any free time? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I'm, I'm using my free time for, for my family as well, but also for, for handball. Uh, I try to, to restart my, my handball career with, uh, together with my son. It's, okay. it's hard, but <laughs> <laughs> it feels good. Yeah? Yeah, I have also two kids. Uh, my son uh, will be 17 in September and my daughter will be um, 13 in August. Uh, and in my leisure time I'm, I'm lifting weights, running around, doing some sports because if you are all the day are sitting on a table and, and thinking about things. Uh, it uh, does make sense to to use your body sure. and uh, do other things. So yeah. I enjoy yeah that activity. <laughs> so I like I said I had no idea uh, about Santa Claus Day. What are for <laughs> others who may not have um, have traveled to Germany before, and especially as we grow our relationship and possibly collaborating on education and hopefully bringing some training from the U.S. to Germany, what would be your tourism pitch to, to Germany um, to attract people to come and visit? Yeah, my, my tourism pitch would be coming to Germany on October 16 and 17 mm. to Berlin. Mm. I think this is a, <laughs> yeah, this should be the first uh, visit to Berlin. State. It's, it's yeah. Berlin, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and Berlin is an amazing city. Is it? A lot of history and beautiful museums and yeah, architecture. Great. Yeah, yeah. I can just see in my mind the those iconic photographs of, of the city 
Um, thank you for joining us, all three of you. As I indicated, this partnership means a lot to the NACVA, Parnell Black, the CEO, um, your members who we have had the opportunity to support with you and look forward to future collaborations and just um, helping you grow your membership as well. Thank you, Thank Brian. You, Brian. Thank you, Brian. You're very welcome. You. And we'll see you all in the next installment of the Emerging Leader Series.